My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... Destiny, lightning did not strike twice in Carta. That's for sure. It's definitely for sure. I'm not sure if it really struck once, but, you know... Well, I, I think it did, personally. I, I think... I, I was hoping that the lightning would strike the skateboard twice, but it only did it once, in my yeah. opinion. So, you know, I mean. It is- you know, it's the skateboard kid part one is like the Citizen Kane of skateboard movies. Yeah, and, it is. Um, <laughs> this was more like the um, um, Larry the Cable Guy, um, <laughs> you know, piece of shit sequel. <laughs> <laughs> yep. W- without yep. Cable Guy. Because, but, but now I just had an idea in my head that I really think Larry the Cable Guy should make Citizen Kane too. And, no, uh, <laughs> no. Just so we can do it. <laughs> yeah, just so we can. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't know, man. C- C- Citizen Kane two, Rosebud Boogaloo. Yeah. Oh my god. Or no, a Rosebud. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it's. Our like a barbecue sauce. Ro- Ro- Rosebud red hot chili fart sauce. <laughs> or some bullshit. I take primal sex so I can eat whatever I want without having heartburn anymore. It's like, yeah, how about this fucking asshole? Maybe like, don't eat a bunch of food that's gonna like hurt your stomach. You know, that that could be a thing you could do too. No, I'm gonna eat for how a sec and then eat a bunch of chili with nothing but yeah. how, you know, and ghost peppers in it. Okay, cool. Good job. But, Love but you for that. Like, there really are legitimate people that need to take Prolosex, such as myself. I, so, um... <laughs> I don't like, know, prescribed it by their doctor. I know, but, but he was such a terrible spokesman for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh it's like having some kind of like uh I don't know, getaway driver from a uh from a bank robbery be your uh spokesperson for your uh new Ford or something, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, anywho, <clears throat> today on the show we are covering the sequel to the skateboard kid you thought there was just one but no there was a part two mm-hmm. made like a year later <laughs> totally different cast totally different plot sort yeah. of sequel in name only um yeah somehow more trippy than the first one as far as plot is concerned but also simultaneously boring which i'm not sure how those te- two things work but yes. somehow they made make it work so yes and this uh this movie was uh directed by andrew stevens who also stars in the movie as um as uh who does he play he, he, does he own the competition or is he just he's the, it? He's, the, he's the guy that runs the competition okay um 
I forgot his name and I can't find it right now in this castle. Oh yeah, I don't remember. The second was like but, Frank, not Frank. That was the old Franklin guy. Franklin or something. I don't know. Uh, but I can't I'll, I'll look it up in a minute here. But it was written by Karen Kelly, who uh as far as writing credits go, Karen Kelly has written Time Lapse, The Elf Who Didn't Believe, <laughs> Best Sunday, Angel mm. Training, Poison Ivy New Seduction. <laughs> no. Um, Dead of Night, Subliminal Seduction. Oh boy, Body Lost Chemistry or Full Exposure. So basically, like soft porn, Dreams, Skateboard Kid Two, and Scorned. It's like, <laughs> like a bunch of like soft core porn movies. Not really porn, but you know, like well, I wouldn't say soft core, but they're they're bordering, borderlining <laughs> on soft core porn. We can call them like uh, sexy, sexy movies. Or and, Skidamax uh, or something yeah. like that. And um, like I remember and watching kid, in kids' movies, movies, there's something weird about them both being written by the same. Yeah, movie. well, it's it's dichotomy of man. It's uh, yeah, it's <laughs> like the uh, or maybe she got hired to it's like, hey, sh- sure, I'll write this movie, whatever. No, I remember yeah. watching Poison Ivy two on like Showtime when I was like 13 or 14 years old. Well, like, I stayed I, up. Poison Ivy: The New Seduction is that two or. F- three because there's several poison ivy movies oh maybe i maybe i was thinking of, i don't know it was one of them yeah. i think it was one of the sequels yeah it's uh oh yeah it it no no yeah there's poison ivy poison ivy 2 poison ivy the new seduction and okay. then it and, the, and poison ivy the new seduction came out in uh 1997 and then oh. the, the fourth one came out in 2008 as a tv oh, movie gee. Called Poison Ivy: The Secret Society. Okay, interesting. <clears throat> which, which starred Miriam McDonald from uh, DeGrassi. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. I remember that freaked yeah. me out, man. Because like I, it was like I saw a scene on like a YouTube once, like a long time ago, and I was just like, I'm like, no, there's no way that's her. That's fucking weird. And then I was like, no, okay, definitely looked it up. It's definitely her. I'm like, okay. Yep. The one that like, Karen wrote um, starred Jamie Presley from uh, My Name is Earl and Ma, other things. Um, yeah, uh, so, yeah. The one that looks like an older version of either uh, either Samara Weaving or Margot Robbie. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, pretty decent cast. I mean, there's some pretty... And th- this know, I, I, movie has a decent cast. We've got D. Wallace, who goes from you know, several years earlier being the mom in, uh, ET to be in mom in this <laughs> as Lois Curtis, we've got Bruce Davison, um, who is in everything. Um, <laughs> Bert Squires, the bad guy. Yeah. yeah. There we go. We got Andrew Stevens. He's Ken Fields, not, not Franklin Fields is the, Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Ken, Ken Fields. And we got, uh, Trent Knight as Sammy Curtis, our lead actor. We've got Turin Bay as Zeno. We've got Full House as Andrea Barber. Yeah. Um, Tilly Curtis. We've got Brooke Stanley as uh, Sammy's friend, Mickey Kincaid. And we also have future alev- uh, alleged cult leader, Andrew Keegan, as Dan Foster. <laughs> <laughs> wait, really? Col- yeah. Wait, hold on a sec. I didn't hear about that. Wait. Yes. He was accused of being a cult leader. For what what cult? He started so Andrew Keegan um in 2014 Keegan fund um founded Full Circle, a community spiritual center based in Venice, Los Angeles. Vice characterized the organization as a new religion while other outlets called it a cult. In a 2015 interview, Keegan described the group as a non-denominational spiritual community center where people of all beliefs and backgrounds come together to meditate, practice yoga, and engage artistically. New York uh, Magazine reported in March of 2015 that the actual theology of the group is tough to pin down, but it seems to loosely follow Hinduism, or at least uh, Russell Brand's Sanskrit tattoo version of it. Um, <laughs> that's their, well, now, that's, he's, now he's a right-wing Christian, yeah, so I guess... That, that, that's their more. quote. From the thing, and um, in um, May of 2015, the Full Circle Temple was raided by the California Department of Alcohol and Beverage Control officers. Um, the uh, 
The raid was apparently related to Full Circle's distribution of kombucha, a fermented beverage. A spokesperson for the temple stated that they were unaware that they needed a license to distribute kombucha. Full Circle closed in 2017 due to financial difficulties. Um, yeah, so the, the re- license to distribute anything. Yeah. Like, that does, argument doesn't make any sense. Like, even if you made, like, homemade soda, you would still need some oh, yeah. kind of... Like, well, you know, I, I mean, you can give people soda for free, but I mean, if you, you need a license to sell it, but if you're making homemade, I guess, but you know, like, but if I went down to the store and bought a two liter of Pepsi and shared it with some people at the church, it would be okay. You know what I mean? But, yeah. Yeah. But, um, it's, yeah. That's so great. is that the yeah. kid with like the wavy hair? Yeah. He's, he's the one who's the, the love interest to, uh, yeah. To to the sister to Andrea Barber's character, so yeah, dude, I remember I recognized that kid right away because I I remember <laughs> seeing him on like almost everything, oh. like a lot of skateboard type movies during that era, like or something <laughs> like that. In the in the nineties, he was on like every girl's bedroom wall, like he he right. was the cover of every like seventeen or teen beat magazine, you know. So at the time, so it was just like he was the the dream boat. Um, he was also in, he was in 10 things I hate about you, um, camp nowhere, a bunch of other movies that I can't think of off the top of my head, but he's like, he was like huge for a time there. So, yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember wanting his hair cause like that wavy hair. I remember wanting to get a haircut like his, but my hair just didn't naturally fall the right way. Yeah. But yeah. yeah he, had a, he had a green roll on seventh heaven. Okay. You know, which was about a, uh, a a minister who in real life actually sexually huh. uh, underage women, but, yep. um, or girls. Underage, girls, I should say not women underage girls. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's uh, yep. Good stuff. Great, great stuff. We live in this, all these people in Hollywood and we're well, not just Hollywood. Yeah. It's any, but, but any. I'm just saying the whole thing with, with, uh, with, with Andrew Keegan, people claimed it was a cult, but it was never, declared a cult by anybody so i'm just saying that you know he was accused of being a cult leader um i don't know if it is or it was or if it was just a group of people getting together to be spiritual together and make art you know so right uh, yeah <clears throat> but i just thought i'd pull that uh, you know throw that out there yeah but yeah, yeah we've got we've got other people in smaller roles we've got ken schreiner from general hospital as colonel at the uh at the recruiting center. Um, we got Larry Poindexter as an announcer and he's been in a bunch of things. So, yeah. So those are a couple of random throwaway characters that were, you know, played by people you've probably seen in other things. Um, <laughs> so initial thoughts on this movie here, man, I, I was disappointed. I, I thought it was really, really boring. Uh, there are some cool trippy things that could have made the movie more interesting, yeah. but they just didn't know what to do with those trippy things. Like for example, <clears throat> so spoilers warning of people haven't seen the first movie from 1994 <clears throat> in May to 1993 was that lightning strikes a skateboard that our hero was making in his garage and had a little motor attached to it. And for some reason, lightning striking the motor gave it a personality, which I'm not sure how that works. But, uh, and then, so that was the first one. This one is much more convoluted. It's that this kid named Sammy, uh, well, we'll get into that, but yeah, just the, the thoughts was, it was boring to me. Yeah, it was pretty boring, I think. Um, it it kind of had a similar plot to the first one, but not completely. Like, you know, somebody trying to, somebody maybe losing their home and, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, and this, this one at least kind of focused more on skateboarding than the other one, even though they didn't really show a lot of it. <laughs> right. And, and when they did show skateboarding, it was, uh, it was obviously uh, not the people skating in some of the scenes. Oh yeah. yeah. No, you could definitely tell it was a stun double. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, 
did not like this movie. Um, <laughs> it had potential. It really did, but it just, it just they couldn't execute it. It was correctly. really predictable. Really predictable. Was like, for example, so like, just to like, if it, can I make the first point real quick? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so the movie, the the beginning of the movie, I could already tell what's going to happen. Was <clears throat> Sammy and his dad are working on a car that's like that's been like their like project, you know, as father and son or whatever. And then <clears throat> he's like, "Okay, buddy, I gotta go to work now. We'll we'll you know we'll get back to this tomorrow or tonight or whatever." And then so like he walks away from the garage. And he's like walking towards like the door into like the regular house, but it has like this really weird like silhouette feel to it, where like they're, like they're almost like shadows, and then there's like a big great light like facing the other way. And he's like he puts on his helmet. He's like, I know, honey, I I, I know you're scared, but they're they want me to test out this plane, you know, and all. I'm like, oh boy, guys, the guy, the guy's definitely gonna get, die from like a plane crash or whatever. Yeah, and then, like. And then, so like, sure enough, he goes through the light. But, but hold on, there was a little bit of a fake out because the next day, it well, seemingly the next day, it shows <clears throat> Sammy flying a remote controlled uh, airplane with his friend uh, Mickey next, you know, next door or whatever. <clears throat> and then we're like, oh, okay, you know, that's interesting. He he's really likes airplanes, like his dad or whatever. And then, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and then. Uh, this this guy, he t- uh, tow truck starts stealing the car, taking the car, and the kid's like, "That's my dad's car. We're gonna fix it up," and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, "I'm like, no, there's no way. The dad, the dad character's dead. There's no way he's still alive. They're not, they're not gonna set it up with yeah. him like really fi- walking into the light." And then, so no, it was a double fake out because the mom gets home and he's like, "Mom, they're taking away dad's car," and then she's like. I know that was important to you, like when you were making that with dad. And I'm like, oh boy, like, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. it, it was a fake out because you get it because he was, the, the car still there, but the, the dad, not, you know, yeah, okay. That was, that, that was their attempt at being clever, I guess. But it all fell flat after that, unfortunately. That, I think they used up their cleverness for that one scene. And then the rest of the movie is a fever dream of, like a weird German scientist dude who works in an empty warehouse. Oh, anyway, sorry, I'm getting way ahead. He was German, <laughs> barely. He was uh, kind of came off as Greek to me, but I don't know. Maybe he was Greek. I don't know, but he, he's some kind of foreigner. Yeah the uh, the actor. Um, the actor to... was it, was it Zeno? Was that his yeah, name? The actor's name was Zeno. The actor's name was Turin Bay. Um, right. Turin, that's kind of like, a, isn't that a German name? That's what I'm wondering if he was German or what he was. Sounds Aust- German to me. Austrian. Okay. Well, yeah, t- he was, he was Austrian. an Austrian born of, he was Turkish and Czech, Jewish. Oh, you? interesting. Okay. Yeah. He was, uh, he was like a, like, uh, he acted for a long time. Like he, his, uh, f- looks like some of his first movies were like in the 40s. Oh geez, yeah he, he, yeah he was like active from 1941 to 53, and then it looks like he took a long break, and then came back to acting in 1990 until 98. Okay, and then he died in 2012. So yeah, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, so wow, I'm itching to get into this movie. Can we get into it? Because yeah. tell me, tell is... me what goes on here in this uh, spectacular piece okay. of. Cinema. So, <laughs> yes, in this spectacular piece of cinema, we have that scene that leads up to like, oh, I get it, the the, the dad guy died in the plane crash, probably or something. I, they yeah. didn't say that. That was probably what happened because mm-hmm. he was literally on his way to to test the new jet that the military was making, and he walks into the light. So I'm assuming that was what they were going for. Who knows though with this movie, you know, because you can never yeah. tell. But and so he um. He's trying to find something to do, I guess, you know, and he gets the idea to maybe do a skateboard thing. And then the kids, of course, the older kids, of course, make fun of them because he's younger than they are and he's not very good. So then he gets really upset about that. Then he ends up making a wish or something. I don't remember what it was. And then he ends up getting this thing in the mail. Somehow it knows where he lives. I don't. 
his address. And I don't even know if someone's stalking him. I'm not sure. But and then so <laughs> it's for like a mag, like a little flyer to like order like some cool custom made skateboard, I guess. And so he gets the idea to save up some money or take some money he saved up and to buy this thing. And then it comes in the mail a few days, a few days later. And it turns out that you have to assemble it by hand. And so he's pissed off about that. And so he tries to go, mind you, there's a lot of scenes in this movie where this kid is just a delinquent. He's just walking around by himself, like in a big city, like Los Angeles or something like, yeah, he gets on the bus and like, he looks like he's like 10 years old. His character is 13, but he looks way younger than 13. This was like the, the, uh, the early nineties though. So back then, yes. back then, you know, kids were allowed to do that shit. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. But there was multiple scenes where he ignored, um, Capricorn aliens advice by not walking through like abandoned warehouse districts and stuff like that and taking shortcuts. Cause you know, yeah, he that's what abducted. you did. Yeah, he didn't. He could have gotten abducted, but unfortunately, he didn't have one of those cool zapper things that could just zap him into a different situation, so he can just get out of any bad situation he's in, as long as he has it on his wrist. Uh, So there was no zapper for that, but Corny... Then again, Corny probably would have been doing... He probably would have led him into the danger, because he doesn't know what he's doing. Yet, he's he's the one that was sent to Earth to teach kids how to protect themselves, but he's the one who has more problems than they do. So I'm not sure he's just getting a free if you'd ride. Like way. more information on that. Be sure to listen to. <laughs> <Sorry. episode>. uh, <laughs> yeah. That's, that, yeah. That's a different movie. Sorry. Uh, or episode, whatever. Um, <clears throat> okay. So he goes returned. So he's still there. Or did you crack up? Are you? I'm good. Okay. Good. Sorry. I don't know if you cracked up, not, not cracking up as in like cracking up, like mentally because <laughs> of that we watched, I, but I just I just went insane and after watching this movie and uh, cracked up that way and uh, yeah I was, I'm thinking about um, institutionalizing myself soon so uh, me too actually yeah for different reasons but uh, you know just our political landscape cr- crumbling before our eyes but anyways uh, that's a different topic but uh, <clears throat> and so this kid he goes he takes the box to this warehouse that is supposedly or where the skateboard was created. And then it's just like completely empty except for one dude who apparently just works there or runs the place alone. And he's like, you know, like dispensing all this weird, like cryptic wisdom, you know, it's like, yeah, cause you know, oh, the smart thing to do is to go into a big abandoned warehouse exactly. and hang out with an scary dude. Exactly. Someone you've never met before. And who like just is like talking into riddles the entire yeah that's a great no I would definitely not be like running towards the door at that point like you know like, who dude, else can... talked in riddles what who? you know who else talked in riddles no the Riddler oh. yeah the Riddler exactly <laughs> he was not a good character and so he's like oh well sometimes things seem like they're broken but they're really just needs to be put together just some like stupid truisms that don't make any sense. <laughs> To actually think about it but they sound like deep and profound especially yep. from him because he had like an austrian accent i guess so he ends up <clears throat> building the skateboard or and then sammy starts helping him build it and then he's like says some weird bullshit about like listening to your heart or whatever i don't know and yeah. then he like put like this weird little <clears throat> heart-shaped thing in the skateboard <clears throat> and then it like activates it through like some weird like futuristic digital technology that we don't know exists in the earth at this mm. point. And there's like a timer on it. And so apparently he has to do, he has to like, quote, listen to his heart or whatever before this timer goes out for some reason, I, whatever. They don't explain why. I, I mean, and, the, the, this whole chapter is not part of the, uh, the, the selected writings of the, uh, the, 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 um, the Deloise, um, you know, directive of, uh, beliefs that we have in the Deloise, um, you know, the, the skater freaks, you know, we're not, you know, (laughs) yeah, the skater freak. No, this this is not part of the Deloise canon. This is veered off. This is, uh, 
this is like its own its own canon that's not considered part of the true I, canon. I can I consider um I consider uh what's the guy's name Zeno or whatever. Yeah, Zeno. Yeah, yeah. I consider him a false prophet. Yeah, I think so too. He's not real. He's he's a false, and I have proof that he's a false prophet too because there's many black magic things that he does throughout this movie I, that should not. I mean, mind you, I'm pretty sure that this movie did inspire Andrew Keegan to start his religious group. He might have been. No, really, it could have been actually. <laughs> it could have been because it's, it's really trippy. <clears throat> so he gets a skateboard. It's all tricked out. It's got these cool lights and shit on it. Occasionally, Zeno speaks through the skateboard. So <clears throat> I don't know <clears throat> if he put a microphone in the skateboard so that he can communicate with Sammy in his bedroom at night, complete stranger. Anyway, is- and uh, or if he's like <laughs> somehow projected his spirit into the skateboard and now has become one with the skateboard, almost kind of like how Christians believe like Jesus and God are like inseparable. So maybe Xeno and a skateboard are kind of like a holy trinity, you know, I guess a holy duality, if you will, of like yeah. spirit and form. <clears throat> anyway, and so. He goes, uh, this is the problem I had with both movies, actually. I mean, I do think Skateboard Kid 1 is, is like a near-perfect movie, like, unironically. But the <laughs> one thing I didn't like about it, and, and this movie apparently decided to carry on the, the one bad tradition from the first movie. None of the good things, but it carried on the one bad thing from the movie, so that's a great start thing, is that the kid doesn't, like, the skateboard does all the work for the kid. Like, there's no, like, there's no, like, skill well, like you know what i mean well in this movie we at least have at the ending where the kid does it because of his heart but then again that's even more stupid because he has no training he skateboard like what three times in his life at this point and he's doing all these crazy tricks on like dude he would have cracked his skull open if he really tr- tried those tricks for real let's be real like hey, they- i will tell you something though that very few people know about this movie okay it's actually the uh, the fictionalized biography of Tony Hawk. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is how <clears throat> it's hates so yeah. well. I mean, it makes sense. But yeah, like it's like these both these movies have this thing where it's like the skateboard is like the one in control for the most part. Yeah. And then there's some some thing where the skateboard breaks or gets stolen or whatever, and like, oh no. What am I gonna do? It's just me, you know. Blah blah blah. And then it's I, like if, if if we we you and I were ever to write a sequel, mm-hmm. I think Skateboard Kid Three <laughs> should be where the kid actually becomes the skateboard. Yeah, see, that would actually be better. No, it would be mm-hmm. and like because like that's the thing too is like having like the ghost of like a former character or like the spirit of a character helping like the new character that. <clears throat> is a more compelling story writing than just like, oh, it got struck by lightning, and so now the motor has a personality for some reason. Or the okay. painful transformation, like when you see like um in like American Werewolf in London, where the guy turns into the werewolf. There's this like painful yeah. transformation where he turns into a skateboard, and then um his life is ruined because now he has to live the rest of his life as a skateboard. Yeah. And people are always like stepping on him and riding him all the time. And it's like, God damn it, this is my back. It hurts. You can't do anything about it. Though. It's a skateboard. What do you <laughs> got to do? Right? Nothing you could do. And then so <laughs> and so he goes back and he does all these cool tricks. And the, the kids are like, whoa. And like, just like the first one, you had like <clears throat> one of the guys that were in like the skateboard game doesn't yeah. like the fact that they're picking on the kids so much. And so that person slowly starts fading away from the game because he doesn't agree with like what the leader's doing. So you had yeah. that one, the first one, there was a guy that was kind of like, yeah, he just sort of, he wasn't like, a dominant of a character, but he still no, was there. He wasn't. Not yeah. the first one, but he did at the end, he did end up like taking a rope and like basically knocking all the other kids off. And they were trying to skateboard down. Yeah, the and this one, like the first one, you also have like the kind of like leader of the skate punks, is uh the son of the main villain so yeah exactly so that's exactly the same and they even tried to make the guy look a little well i guess no not really actually yeah. for a second i thought that guy was the dude who played terry silver in the karate kid 
But I had to look it up. I'm like, no, it's not him. Okay. Uh, Cause that would have been hilarious if it was, it was that actor. Cause, cause Cobra Kai. What you mean? Season... The, you mean the bad guy, the Bruce oh, Davis? Yeah. The, uh, the, what's the guy with the, the guy who's like selling houses or whatever. The, yeah. The Bruce Davis. Yeah. Burt Squires. Yeah. Burt Squire. Yeah. And so, yeah, for a second, I thought he looked familiar, but I looked him up because sometimes I, I yeah, think... and he does, he does look familiar because he's in everything. So, you know, he's literally in like, I've seen him in so many things. I mean, he's <laughs> the X-Men movies. So come on. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He was in those. Um, I've seen him in stuff from the eighties and nineties as well. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, he does all these cool tricks at the skateboard court and they're kind of mad at him because he's doing good and they, they're suspicious and, you know, so they think it's something to do with the skateboard. So already we're getting into like that plot of like the skateboard special bro or whatever. So the, the main leader hatches this plan to invite him to do like a challenge or whatever. And then they're going to end up stealing the skateboard. And so that the leader of the gang can have it, but the skateboard or Xeno living in the skateboard rather, I guess has different plans in mind. And so he lets, he has a Sammy fly because apparently we need to have that again twice in two movies is a skateboard flying. And the kids question that either. That's what I think is funny. What's that? None of the kids question how he's able to like oh, fly. They don't. They just said like, Oh, how could he do that? Like, instead of like being like, if I saw that in real life, my reaction wouldn't be like, Oh, how could he do that? I would be like almost terrified. Yeah. <laughs> seeing that I'm seeing someone flying, like, like totally going against with, the law with, of physics out of propeller or, um, or like any kind of propulsion, like at all. It's just, yeah, <laughs> no, I would, yeah, I would probably be screaming. Cause I never, I mean, I, it's one thing to watch in TV, but if you saw that in person in real life, I guarantee you most people would actually be like terrified, even if nothing bad was happening, just because of how abnormal that situation would be. I mean, because anyone. it's it's like I, I've I've uh, thought about it recently. I was like watching um, Back to the Future two parts of it the other day, and I was thinking about like flying cars and that and everything, and I was just like and like the Jetsons and all these other things. And then I thought about it, the logistics of actually making a flying car. You, none of these, none of these uh, cars in these movies have a, have something that actually shows you how they're propelled into yeah. the sky, like, and how they keep above air. It just doesn't make any scientific logistics. So <laughs> logistical sense. Yeah. No, it was just made to look cool, basically. Eh. <laughs> and like, I don't know, man. Like, there's a scene where um, Sammy tries to go back to the warehouse and Zeno isn't there, but like he's occasionally he's talking to him. Yeah. At night, so like, so there's this whole thing. There's like a subplot going on where Sammy isn't really hanging out with Mickey anymore that much, and they used to have like these walkie-talkie conversations, but then he started putting on headphones at night, and so. He could never hear her talking they never to him. Tried why he explained why he did that. They, they never. Well, I, I thought maybe it was because of the noise from the skateboard, maybe like yeah. the weird blippy sounds. I don't know. Um, yeah, they didn't actually. really explain it. And I mean, the thing is, is those, those weird blippy sounds and stuff. I mean, that house isn't that big. Don't you think his sister or his mom would have noticed those noises? Exactly. That's the other thing, too, is a, a skateboard that lights up, especially at night. And occasionally Xeno, that's the other thing too, is like, why, why does Zeno just like randomly start having conversations with them in the middle of the night? Like he can't wait like until the morning, like he has to like randomly like two in the morning, like, oh yeah, I just, I thought about this. I need to get my thought out. Like, dude, like, no, like wait till the morning. Come on. Like, and well, well yeah, no, this game I still pretty cool. Though. Or does that to me in the middle of the night. So I oh, don't really? know. Yeah. yeah. Both of these movies, both of the kids have a very unhealthy relationship with the skate their skateboard. I just gotta say it. Like, <laughs> no, in the first one, he's like literally sleeping, like hugging the skateboard. I'm like, okay, uh, <laughs> like, wait, come on, we both know that, right? We we all have our security <laughs> skateboards. <Yeah. laughs> I think I, I I think Sammy does it at one point in this movie too. So yes, he does. I think he it's like okay. I mean, it was the 90s, so I guess a skateboard was kind of like 
a teddy bear maybe or something like that like oh yeah yeah i used to have a stuffed skateboard it was kind of weird oh really <laughs> <They're> okay <laughs> <laughs> but all yeah. in all first one's way better the skateboard this one does look pretty cool you know i'll, I'll give it that um and but so, the weird stuff with Xeno, what's that? Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, it's 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 not as cool. <laughs> and like the stakes aren't as high. You know, I guess they are as high, but they just doesn't there's not the acting does not convey the importance of the matter. So like and, the, one of the big things is that they're losing their house or potentially losing their house. You want yeah, you want to take over from now? <laughs> I'm just saying they're potentially losing their house and stuff. But my main thing with the with, with the with the with the menace of the movie, I guess you could say, is there's not enough Bruce Davidson scenes, right? It, it, I I hate to say this, but the skateboard kid too focuses too much on the skateboard kid. Um, it does. <laughs> no, it really does. It, that that we don't really get the get the stakes of the fact that you know his mom might be losing their house and they might have to, you know, cause they, I mean, sure. They saw They show us the, the attachment of the car and then they have to sell the car to help pay bills and stuff. But it's just like, it doesn't really come off that way and nothing against Bruce Davison. He just doesn't come off as creepy as I think he should. No, uh, like the first movie, like, Frank, he was like this car salesman dude. Like he had that kind of he, slimy he was cartoonishly you know. creepy. And I think Bruce yeah. Davison, playing it more realistically creepy where it this movie needed a cartoonishly creepy character right yeah yeah i agree he just he was just like a little bit creepy the other weird thing though about that though is so <clears throat> she caught him on her property twice and i'm like isn't that against the law to just be like walking in someone's yard with like but thou like she still owns the house at this point this is yeah. not it's not foreclosed like you know, it's not like, oh, you have 30 uh, days to evacuate the house. Like, it's still her house. Yeah, and she said she was going to call the cops if he didn't get out of there right away. And he did get out of there that one time. But then he came back, which that's the time where I'm like, <laughs> she should have called the cops right then. I um, mean, yeah. exactly. It's like, dude, you can't just walk. You can't just, like, meander through other people's yards without, like, asking them. To, like, for example, it's just like, like, you know, sometimes, for example, like, you know, the neighbor kids might, you know, run through the yard a little bit if they're playing in their yard, fine, whatever. But if, like, yeah. you're just, like, some random dude that just, like, is walking in my yard, I'm like, no, like, can I help yeah. you? Like, you know. Yeah, I mean, and if the neighborhood kids were, like, just hanging out in your yard, that would be weird, too, you know? Yeah, I think, yeah, this is a certain amount of time. It's just for, like, a minute. But if, if we're, like, talking 10 to 15, I'm like, okay, what's, what's your business? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just like the feeling of being nervous. Like, what what are we doing here? And um, get out like, my lawn. Well, I mean, even if they just started playing catch in your front yard, that'd be kind of weird. But yeah, it would be if they didn't ask permission. The thing is, too, if they did, I would be fine with that. Like, yeah. But like, you do need to ask, and that's that's the point too. Is like, you you can't just do it. Like, and yeah. Sky, of course, he's an adult, so he has really no excuse at that point, and he's also a business guy, I guess, or something. They never really explained what he did. Did they? They just like, it, it, that's something about, like, you know, like, Oh, this is all going to be, you know, skyscrapers here. Or sky highs. Oh, here. right. Okay. Like what the heck? Yeah. But it was just like mentioned like once. It wasn't like the, the previous guy, Frank, we, 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 we didn't we know knew. that he was a, uh, if, if he was like a real estate developer or what he was, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We just knew that he was rich or at least well off. And, and they, I don't know, they try to have these, like, funny little bits in the movie where, like, he was talking to his son, who's, again, who's the leader of, like, the skateboard group or gang, not really a gang, whatever, just the yeah. the leader of that group. <clears throat> and he's like, you know, I, you know how I feel about losing and, and, you know, how I felt when your, when your mother left me for that Greek tycoon and his kid's like, he was a pastry maker at a greek deli or something like that yeah. or it's like... <laughs> and then they, they tried to have a call back to it too and it fell flat exactly. I'm like, okay like you uh, we, we already we already established that lightning did not strike twice so it's definitely not going to strike three times so let's let's give it up okay give up the dream yeah i mean this i don't know if really struck once in this movie so yeah um... no it did not, not this movie there's no lightning 
literally no lightning in action in fact there's there's no storms it, it, it this one Zeno is the storm that's, that's because, the other... you know why that is why it doesn't rain in Southern California oh maybe that's why <laughs> <laughs> at least that's what the song says that's a good call that's a good uh call yeah. not call back good reference yeah uh, yeah yeah and and Xeno, the thing that scares me, though, is that Xeno, we don't know anything about him. We know he's probably got some kind of mystical powers of some sort. He's Austrian. Uh, In the first movie, lightning strikes the skateboard, which gives the skateboard a personality by Dom DeLuise playing the voice. We established in that movie that Dom DeLuise has some form of magic. I, I... postured dark arts but maybe just regular magic too and so storm stormfront stormfront was one of the first white supremacist websites online the nazis had groups called stormtroopers this guy's austrian so i'm thinking is there some nefarious stuff afoot here like what's going on with this character you know I mean, and Hitler um was austrian hitler was austrian and so you know just saying there's i mean maybe thing. i you know, working with Mengala or something, you know, I don't know. So, and the main, the main kid, the main villain kid, the, the Squires, he was blonde, blonde hair, blue eyed. Um, you know, he's got his cohorts of other skaters that kind of just follow his command <laughs> without question, except for the, the one kid who later on allegedly started the cult, but he, he was the only one that spoke up against them, but he got yeah. severely for doing so. And so there's another subplot. There's like three subplots. So there's that one. And then the other one is that the, the Andrew Stevens guy, he's, he shows up. He's like, Hey guy, Hey kids, are you, you're practicing hard for your competition or whatever. You know, like, yeah, we'll, we'll see you on Sunday, sir, whatever. And then another adult hanging out in the park with kids. So, um, yeah. Well, this, it is, it is what he had an actual reason because he yeah, was, you know, so it's kind of weird to me, but yeah. it is a little bit weird, but it's a nineties, you know, you got kids taking buses by themselves and, you know, <laughs> which is another thing too. And so, so Sammy, his character is supposed to be 13 years old. This kid does not look a day over 11 to me. I don't know what's going on with that. And the other thing too. And so like this was, so the, the beginning of the movie is when he's fixed up the car with his dad. His dad walks into the light to symbolize that he's going to die in a plane crash the next day. And then this is the, then the next scene where he's playing with the, the remote control airplane. This is supposed to take place quote years. Well, after supposed, it looks like three he's days. Supposed, and like, he's supposed to be 12 by the way. Oh, okay. I thought he said 13. No, that's right. He did say 12. Uh, and the and, actor 12 when this was made. So, okay. Well, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. He looks like it. And so, yeah. but from that scene to the next scene, he looks like he's aged like three days. And it was supposed to be years after that event happened. Okay, sure. And, yeah. and at that point, too, we had no idea he had a had sister during the beginning of the yeah. movie. So well, sister the plane, just... It, it was a different actor playing him as a kid, so... Was it? Yeah. Okay, well, just see. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe sometimes I, I can't tell a difference. <laughs> I can't nail look like all these Austrians and these... Uh, t- black haired I don't know whatever and then uh, I don't know what I'm talking about but like and so Andrew Stevens guy what was his name Ken Fields um yeah Kenneth Fields I think was his name uh he's like yeah I you should you should do the competition too or whatever and he's like no 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 thanks sir I'm not really in the competing he's like oh come on you should be you could be fun or whatever and there's you know prize money and all kinds of other things and he's like oh prize money Okay, sure, I'll be there. Blah blah blah, whatever. And so then, and got this you know, white van that says "free kittens" on the side of it. <laughs> exactly. Then that shows up, yeah. and then Corny's out there to save him. So then that's <laughs> the end of that movie, and it's a terrible ending. Just you don't know what happens. Just uh, and, uh, and so he goes to see Xeno again a few times. He's not really showing up. He's talking through the skateboard again, either through microphone or some kind of mystical magical powers. We're not sure. Um, long story short, the kids try to steal the board. They don't steal it, but the timer runs out. Uh oh, the timer runs out. So now the board doesn't work anymore. Oh, meanwhile, so there's another plot where the kid was going to try to steal the board, 
by having the cult leader, having the future cult leader with the wavy hair, who apparently was the dreambow of the 90s, which I vaguely yeah. remember that. Had him, to, had him go to the dance with uh, yes. Andrew character and to get her out of the house the same night that the dad took the mom to the house out, out to dinner to talk about saving her house. So so an adult male has hatched a plan for his minor son to commit a crime of breaking and entering and stealing property and under the ruse that he was also um, sexually harassing the kid's mother at dinner. So, you know, it was the 90s, though, right? 90s, so. Yep. Different different time, different era, I guess, when things were okay, normalized back then. So she spills pasta on his pants. They try to do this funny little thing where he's always yelling at the waiter, like, Ralph. I guess they thought that would be kind of quirky and funny to me. It just was kind of stupid. Yeah. Fell flat to me. I know what they were trying to do, just didn't, didn't really succeed in my view. And... And so, sorry, am I talking to which you can no, start talking? But basically, though, you know, in, in the movie, then he ends up making it to the uh, to the competition eventually. Gets his board back, but uh, Mickey gets hurt in the process. He gets her to the hospital by stopping a cop. And oh, um, yeah, by riding with the skateboard, holding on to the fucking car, the door. Yeah, pulling like a you mark- do. Pulling a Marty McFly sort of thing. And yep. uh, he, uh, but anyways, they, they get her help. She's good. And uh, he's got to go, go to the, uh, go to the um, competition. He gets there, but Zeno talking through the skateboard says, you know, I no longer have the power because I used it all. Blah, blah, blah. And um, right. then uh, he, they give him another board. He need he says, I think my board's broken. So they give him a regulation board from the place. And then he, Turns into like a thirty-year-old man and skates and <laughs> right <laughs> because yep. the the stunt double looked nothing like him like and nothing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's more on that in a minute. Um, the uh, that that so so then he he wins the competition and uh, you know he wins the prize and then that saves the house so he can you know his mom can pay off the mortgage or whatever and. Uh, they have a party afterwards at the house that uh, everybody goes to, except for the the squires, the jerk, and his son. <laughs> and um, then uh, while at the party, Zeno shows up in the backyard on a swing. Oh my god! And Sammy and him have this little, you know, heart to heart about things, and you know, you got to use your heart. And um, <laughs> <laughs> right. The uh, um, Mickey comes wearing a pretty dress and kind of stunned Sammy. I guess, you know, this is his first, you know, thinking a girl's pretty sort of thing. I think no, it's the whole and, thing. Like, no, it's the whole thing. You look like a girl because she was a tomboy. You get it. You know, cause she put a dress on. Um, it's one of those things. Like when they take the glasses off, Whoa! Yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, the, uh, anyway, so, um, she takes, she has a, she randomly has a Polaroid camera with her. So she takes a picture of, right. uh, Owen, <laughs> And and Sammy, and then when the picture develops, which I actually saw a mile away, just letting you know, (laughs) it develops, and it's not Zeno sitting there; it's his dad. So, okay, I have a thousand questions about that. Okay, so are we? Is this to infer that Zeno is like his dad from like the future, or some kind of weird like multiverse thing, like? Why would it become his dad? Like, why? Like, I don't know, but for some reason, when they took the picture, I was just like, it's going to be his dad when it develops. Of course. No, I, 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 I thought the same exact thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why it is, but I thought that was going to happen. I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? Well, um, yeah. I'm well guessing from their perspective. I have no idea. This movie came out like almost 30 years ago and it was made 30 years ago. The only thing I can think of is that, you know, the, the Xeno is always talking about following your heart and stuff. And so he used like the last bit of his magic to then make it look like it was his dad. But that still is really confusing or, or, because I say that his heart is his dad. <laughs> true. But at the same time, though, too, it's like 
Xeno was kind of his friend for a while, so why would he want a picture with Xeno? Like, why would he want to turn it to his dad? Because if you don't know, that's the other thing too. He knows it's a fake picture, so why would that? That's like saying like, oh, I photoshopped you um, with your dad at like Cedar Point in like 2004. <laughs> well, I haven't been to Cedar Point since 2000, so why would I care about a fake picture? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's like I mean. If if I wanted to, I could make a picture tomorrow of me and my grandpa. But it's right. just, my grandpa's That's alive. What I'm it's yeah. not a real. It's not a real picture. So why would it hold any emotional value? <laughs> oh, oh. Zeno. <laughs> it, it's just one of those things that was going to be answered in Skateboard Kid Three, but we never got <laughs> right. It. <laughs> right. Yes. So, but they um, had no more magic left. It was all used up. So. And, <laughs> Either that, oh. or I think the uh, the company went went bankrupt at some point. So we should start writing sequels to movies that we know Definitely. are terrible. Like we, so we should write a script for the Skateboard Kids three, and then also Gone to Maui Part two. Maybe I've been thinking about that <laughs> one for a while. Um, we'll do that in the future. And if you guys want to help us produce those films, we will. Yeah. <laughs> if you donate to our Patreon. Yes. Um, qu- quick uh, couple goofs from the movie I just wanted to share. There's an obvious height difference between Curtis and his stunt double. Um, oh, yeah. Um, so the kids in the movie all ride new mid-90s to present skateboards. But during the contest footage, the riders are clearly riding old school mid-1980s skateboards. The skateboarding during the contest is actual contest footage from the mid eighties. <laughs> wow. So explains why his stunt double looks nothing like him. And I, I also think it's funny because the stunt double is wearing a blue shirt that's similar to his shirt, but it has writing on the back. And I don't think his had writing on the back. Right. No, it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so I checked. Yeah. Nope. Nope. <laughs> so yeah, that that's, that's, that's the skateboard kid too. Uh huh. So, uh, any other thoughts here? No, not really. Okay. So, uh, folks, um, like I said, you know, be sure to check out our Patreon. Um, you can find the link at all two real com, as well as links to everything else, including our T public, where you can get some, uh, merchandise, um, some t-shirts and whatnot. Um, also, um, give us a five-star review on Apple podcast. I'm thinking of doing something right now. we, we're not quite there yet, but because we, we're we're still low on uh, reviews, and I'd love to get some more. So if we get to fifty reviews, you can pick one of those sh- T-shirts from our T Public for free if you are the fiftieth reviewer. Uh oh. So get on it, folks. Give us a five star review. Tell your friends to give us a five star review, and you know if you're the fiftieth reviewer, you get a free T-shirt. So, um, keep that in mind and, um, just, uh, be sure to like, tell your friends about our podcast and all that good stuff. Um, make sure you don't, you know, accidentally start a cult. Um, (laughs) um, be kind to each other. Um, and just remember that I love you, Zeno or Sammy's dad or whoever the fuck he is loves you. (laughs) Just use your heart. Uh Uh-huh. Sesame loves you. I do. And until next time, bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.